Stop being afraid of using your phone 24-7. Take your phone with you everywhere you go. This allows you to be productive every second of the day. Bring your phone with you while you're eating, sleeping, showering, and dating. This way you can doom scroll your whole life to escape your totally happy reality. You aren't addicted to your phone and your phone is not the reason you are broke and unsuccessful. I've been seeing this Barbie -ish, sugar plum fairy makeup, whatever you want to call it, everywhere. It's just a really fun, refreshing take on holiday makeup, so let's do it together. I already did my eyebrows using my e.l.f. soap brows, and now I'm priming my face with the Westman Super Loaded Drops in the shade Peau de Rosé. These are glittery, which I like, and it's just going to give us a nice soft focus under the foundation. Speaking of, I'm using my House Labs foundation in the shade 143 to give us that really nice second skin kind of look. NARS Light Reflecting Foundation would also be a good option. You just want something that has a very, like, angelic, almost frosty frosty kind of glow to it. As opposed to relying on contour to add shape and dimension to the face, we're going to use a brightening concealer. This way we won't risk adding too much warmth to our face and a really bright center of the face. I feel like pairs really well with the rest of the makeup. Less contour doesn't mean no contour, so I am going to apply a little bit of my Westman stick in the shade Truffle wherever I want to add a little bit more dimension. And then of course there's blush. I'm going to be using a lighter one towards the center of my face and a slightly darker one towards the higher points of my face. The obvious choice here is She's a Doll from Patrick Ta. Now we've created a really pretty blush gradient that is going to tie so well with the eye. We're going to let the face sit before we set while we move on to our eyes. Remember, blush can be eyeshadow too, but I'm going to be using the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk eyeshadow palette and Pat McGrath eyeshadow in the shades Venusian Peony and Eternal Amour. I'm applying the enhanced shade through the crease as a little bit of a transition color. Sweep the shadow up towards your temple to give us that elongated eye shape. Deepening the crease with a tiny bit of Venusian Peony. With my finger, I'm patting on the shade Eternal Amour on the inner half of my eyelid. This way there's kind of a pink undertone laying underneath the champagne shimmer that I'm going to apply now. This is the Iconic London Glaze Crown in the shade Mirage. I'm going to pat it over top of where we put that pink shimmer. With an angled brush and a dark brown shade, I'm going to create a really soft baby wing. I'm going to stamp it on the outer half of my lower lash line and take my finger and just soften that. Curl those lashes. I almost forgot, but to increase that wide eye doe eye effect, I'm taking a beige eyeliner and applying that to my lower waterline. With your mascara, drag it out towards your temples. This is going to further elongate the eye. To add a little bit more drama without adding more eyeliner, I'm applying these Velour Hybrid Cluster Lashes on my outer corner. Now it's time to set. I'm using the Westman Press Translucent Powder and I'm applying that just wherever I want to reduce shine. I like to set my cream bronzer and contour with their powder counterparts. This is the Sigma Matte Bronzer in the shade Medium. Patrick Ta, she's a doll with the powder. I'm gonna flatten the brush like this and just go over my nose bridge a little bit. This may be controversial to some people, but I love powder highlighter. I think it's much easier to work with than most creams or liquids. This is Sun Idol from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I'm just applying this with a loose stippling brush. Most reference images opted for more of like a brown pink, so I'm gonna use Dusty Roses from AVH. Femme from Lawless on the center of my lips, and then a little bit of powder highlighter on the center of my lips to kind of frost them out. And here it is, my take on this really pretty winter pink makeup. It's so pretty, I love it. Here's a more in-depth explanation on how I did this waterline makeup. So I actually didn't put it in my waterline at all. I put it directly underneath my waterline and this really makes it pop so much more because if it's in the waterline, it's kind of just going to get covered up a little bit. But when it's directly underneath it, I'm telling you, it's going to really show. And I use a really small angled eyeliner brush to do this. This is from e.l.f. And I'm just going back and forth, back and forth. Now I am just using black eyeshadow. This is from the Patrick Ta Major Dimensions 3 palette. The black is super, super pigmented. I really love it. And if I don't want to use eyeshadow, it also has a cream version, which I really enjoy. If I shadow keeps coming off for you i would totally recommend layering like a cream and then going on top of with the powder it really does make a big difference but i always keep a touch-up kit on me just in case
if something is making you happy and you're comfortable with it and it's working, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. The truth of the matter is people always have opinions. You can't please everybody. You have to be... Today I want to show you how to paint a simple and easy watercolor landscape. I've started by taping down my paper and getting my sky colors ready. And then we're going to start with the yellow in the middle of the paper, blend out the bottom of that yellow with water, and then start blending in the pink while it's all still wet. Then once we're done with the pink, we'll add the blue. I like to work with horizontal stripes while doing this. And then once that's completely dry, we're going to make some mountains. I'm starting with a strip of water first, and then using a purple color and adding the mountain range on the top. You'll repeat this process as many times as you want for as many layers of mountains as you want. You just have to make sure the previous layers have dried. And I like to change up the color of those mountains as we get close to the foreground. Now we're going to add in some layers of trees, so we'll use some short vertical brush strokes and fill in the rest of the paper below it. And I added another layer of dark green trees here too. And now for our foreground, we're going to add some tree silhouettes using a dark blue. You can really be creative with this. I like to look up reference photos, especially if you're not super comfortable painting trees. But we're just going to add a few of those in the foreground, however many you like. And the last thing I did for just a little touch is a flock of birds. These are just little Vs. Try to change the angle of the V just a little bit for a little bit more variety. And then we can peel off the tape and sign our painting. If you are looking to get into watercolors, I have all of my art supply recommendations linked in my bio, so you can find them there.